Hey guys, how you doing? This is Gabriel from Agon Game 69 coming to you with a Samurai Warriors 2 character review, as it might be. No, it is. That's how it is, yo. Um, this today is like I like. If you've seen the, if you saw Katori Font, Katori, Katori Fuma's review, I said I was going to do Mitsuhide Akechi's, and I did. And I tell you, I'll tell you, folks. You got a pre. I liked him. I liked him. Uh, I'd say I'd give him four, four katanas. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm thinking, the, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted between four and five katanas, uh, out of five, because like, I mean, his story. Well, the thing, I mean, his story in general actually is really. Uh, I mean, I'm no historian, but I've played the game. I've played the game enough to know what the uh, like. I remember what. Oh, let me just minimize that side. I've played the game enough to know, uh, like, which ones are the real ones. Like, the ones that reoccur. Like, uh, Nobunaga, you know, I'm pretty sure historically dies at Hunoji in 1573. Well, you know, I forget the exact date, but he that's like, I'm pretty sure he dies. That's historical. And Mitsuhide wins. So the B you play a battle, the battle that actually historically happens, it's not like Katara Fuma's where they're kind of just like, you know, Mickey Mouse levels that really have no significance or substance. Hey! Are you lifting tomorrow, Eric? Lifting tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah? At 6? Yeah. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with you. Okay. But that's all, dude. I'm not doing any cross training. Okay. <laughs> you doing a deal? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, but, oh yeah, that's what it's all about, folks. No, uh, no retakes. Well, if I'm, if I'm in it, I think we're in it enough, but, uh, yeah. These are, <laughs> I'm not, these aren't, like, game turtle ones. I mean, where it's like, you know, you got the guy who does, like, the solid one, you know. This is a lazy review. Um, that'd be kind of cool, La Eric's lazy reviews. Ooh, think about it. You know, Tabasco says his lazy vlogs. But anyways, um... Yeah, like I think that's really cool because I mean a lot of these, a lot of the fights that you play in in, um, in Samurai Warriors, you know, some of them the, aren't really the ones that happen. And I mean that's I don't have, I don't mind that because it's cool, it's interesting how they would how they go about thinking. Okay, if this half if if you know this character was successful, what would have happened? Kind of a thing. Uh, though I will admit, I feel like they didn't. They could. have, I feel like they were almost kind of had to cut. Mitsuhide's uh, story short because like after the fight of Hon on Honoji, like his last one, like, you know, they basically say he kills Nobunaga and all of a sudden everybody realizes his power and they basically submit to him. But yet, like, that just doesn't seem like, it doesn't follow suit um, to how the other, like, st other characters' stories. It's like, whenever some, it seems like whenever somebody gains power, that's everybody's trying to attack it. Like, it's... It's not one, once he takes one person, it seemed, well, to a point. Like, I'd say, though, the fact that when Mitsuhide had defeated no, you, Nobunaga, or more so, it's not when, no, it's not when he defeats Nobunaga, it's when the fight afterwards, which, uh, that's when it fades into the, uh, not realistic, because Mitsuhide, I'm pretty sure, didn't, wasn't successful. He, I think was, he only had a reign of, like, 14 days, apparently, from what I've inferred, like, from, like, the cross, like, because I remember playing it, and, like, um, Hideyoshi, I think, is actually the part that actually is the truer part, so that kind of was, like, one of those things, I mean, granted, in the fight when you face Hideyoshi, you face, like, Mitsunari Ishida, and, like, Saikon Shima, you face, like, a bunch of big dudes, so I could see where they got that idea, like, there wasn't anybody else to really oppose them, but there would have been, um, Ayasu Tokugawa, he would have probably been a big opposer, but regardless, his moves, though, I like him because he has a katana. That was really cool. I kind of actually wish they would have, like, in Samurai Warriors 1, I kind of liked his outfit a bit more because he had, like, the armor on. But he liked his outfit nonetheless in this one. It's still pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, he's a uh, normal type. That's his type. Uh, so he just basically has, like, X. He can put you push, like, X, you know, 12 times and, like, uh... He does, like, he, he only has one um, Y button, so he kind of, you know, that's where he gets his, and I am, like, way out of time. Uh, so, yeah, um, but anyway, no, you know, so we're going to go to however long I feel. 
But uh, yeah, so though I might need to get out of here. But anyways, yeah, I like you know I I like him as a character. I'd say I like his overall style. He's got a very good style. Though I'd say somewhat of his moves are harder to implement. Like his special, one of his specials, he does like a lightning attack, like a lightning dash, which is kind of good. It's kind of like doesn't seem very useful. It seems kind of just like it's kind of nice. It's actually kind of nice. He is kind of some. He has somewhat of a. You know, you have to kind of finesse him a bit because. You know, you do going into it like hitting square seven times, and then you try to do one of his moves. That can kind of, you know, trying to get that move can sometimes be you got to keep a track of it a lot more than say like a charge character. Like hit, you know, Yuki Mora, he only has like three ones within his charge, his um, you know, his charge attacks. So like he, uh, you don't have to manage be as have to be able to manage it as well in some respects. So it differs, but I do enjoy the fact that you can like. You know, just smash the square button, you know, a lot. That's really cool. I think that's always fun. It depends on that if that's what you like. It's definitely plays tribute to the whole hack and slash. So he's a really solid hack and slash type thing. But the charge characters, in a sense, have that more finesse in a sense. They kind of, they're the combo ones. Because you can't really combo a lot with um, Mitsuhide. At least I haven't figured it out. Maybe I just don't have the touch. Who knows? But, um, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'd give his story a 4. I'd give it a 4 out of 5. I'd give his style a 4 out of 5. I'd say, yeah, he gets 4 katanas out of 5 books. Yeah, that's how it's gonna go. Um, yeah. I haven't played anybody's dreams, so I can't... Though, I don't know how... I mean, I guess I should do... I should have done that before, but... I'm just, you know, the first run through, boom. And then after you beat Mitsuhide Akechi's, uh... I think you get... You, you get Magawichi... Magawichi Saike. Which he looks like he, he'll, he'll be a fun guy. I always enjoyed it. He has a fun... He like shoots a. He's got a rifle. That's so cool. But um, yeah, I think the next person I'll play as is either Mitsuhide Ishida or um, Kanetsugo Nawe. Cause I really want to get Keiji. Keiji's like one of my favorites. He's just. I mean, come on. He's like the Lu Bu of the game. He's just a powerhouse. It's a. It's, well, I say um, Tadakatsu Honda is probably the Lu Bu. But I mean, Keiji Mi. He's a beast. He's nasty. And plus, he's got like, well, no, I would say Keiji Meat is a Lubu because in order to get his fourth weapon, you have to get a thousand kills on a certain map, and that's what you kind of have to do with Lubu. So, by that, you know, that you can see that parallelism and that's, you know, ref reflection. So, yeah, but yeah, I think I'll be doing that because that's how you get Keiji. And Kansugo, Kan, Kansugo, whatever, Nawe, he's, he's a, so he's got a, I like him because he has the cards and the, so he's kind of, kind of, he's kind of one of those more mystical characters. I mean, obviously he didn't have that when he was in real life, but regardless. Okay, I gotta get out of here, but, alright guys, see you, bye.